you so much, Sean, and thank you all to everybody here for still being here. It's been a really long four years, but an even longer 13 years. On one hand, I'm, I'm dismayed that it's still at this point. We, we would have hoped that the British judicial system would have delivered justice by now. We're hoping very much that that is still possible here. But of course, as we all know, this is a political case and it may, in fact, still require a political solution. So we're not letting the US government off the hook today, no matter what happens here in London. The responsibility still lies with the US Department of Justice. At any point, they could drop the charges, they could close this case, they could let Julian Assange free. This doesn't ha it never had to be a matter before the courts, and it does not have to play out in this inevitable way. So let's continue that call on the US to free Assange. Of course, we all know what is at stake here. For my organization, our mandate is press freedom, so we're engaged because of Julian Assange's contributions to journalism. The publication by WikiLeaks in 2010 of the leaked classified documents informed extensive public interest reporting around the world. We know that that exposed war crimes and human rights violations, crimes which have never been prosecuted. Only the publisher is being pursued here. And if he is sent to the US, of course he's the first publisher that will be pursued in this way. This will set an alarming precedent that could be applied to any journalist, any media organization, anyone who works with stories based on leaked classified information, which is of course a normal journalistic process. So when we say that it's the future of journalism at stake, that is what we mean. This case has been going on for far too long as we're hearing many politicians finally starting to concede now. But 13 long years, we will already never know what stories have not been told as the result of this endless legal persecution of Julian Assange. But if this continues, if he is extradited, if he is put on trial in the US, the chilling effect will be enormous. It will impact media around the world and it will impact all of our right to know. Because of course this is ultimately about the public's right to information. We have a right to stories in the public interest. I'm gonna have to hold this closer, sorry. Um, one thing as well is to remind the world actually where Julian Assange is today. We, after a fight uh, with the prison, similar to our fight for court access over the years at Reporters Without Borders, we were finally able to visit Julian in prison four times between August and January. A lot of people, especially in the US, have lost sight of where he even is, but he is in a, a high security prison in the UK, in London, some miles from where we are now. Surely, even if the US government cannot back down on the larger principles of this case, surely at some point it has to be conceded that enough is enough. The leaker, Chelsea Manning, served seven years in prison. President Obama commuted her sentence, stated that it was disproportionate. So why would the publisher, under any pretext of legality here, face up to 175 years simply for publishing information received? It is absurd. But let's remember Julian today. We know his state of mental health. The last time I saw him, I was quite concerned about his uh, state of physical health as well. He had broken a rib from coughing so much. These conditions are grim. He should not be in prison in the UK, in the US, in Australia, anywhere. So let's make that very clear. Anything that comes out of the court process or a political solution should involve no further time in prison for Julian Assange in any country. have had problems this time and I know many journalists around the world have been very disappointed not to be able to access remote proceedings as in the past. We think that transparency is needed in this case. Journalists should be allowed to do their jobs around the world and it's particularly concerning for the US and Australian publics to not be as informed as they otherwise would have been if, if there had been full access granted to journalists. So we just urge again the court to consider other solutions to allow journalists and NGO observers to do their jobs. This hearing is overwhelmingly in the public interest and we all must be allowed to bear witness and report on what we see. So thank you so much. I'm around the next two days and let's hope to see some form of justice.